So look what happened. You have a container. Which is having two openings. And you place a candle inside. And you're, you light up this candle. So what happened, the moment you light up this candle, the air particles, initially the air is in evenly distributed. If the temperature of air is same, then the air particles are evenly distributed. But what happened as you light up the candle, so this part of air will become hot. So as the part of air will become hot, so this part or group of particles, they move away from each other. So this part of air, the volume increases as the particle move away. So the density decrease. As the density decrease, what we will observe As the density decrease, what we'll observe that group of particles will rise or they will move up. So when we come, as these particles leave the flask, the container, so these particles, as they absorb energy, they move away from each other. So density decrease. So group of particles will escape. As these particles will escape, when we compare the particle is at this point because the particle, these particles are not absorbing any energy. So they have smaller volume or small space they occupy or they are having a high density. So as they're having a high density, this part or group of particle will sink. So if we place a smoke particle here, if we have a smoke particle here because the air particles are moving down, so smoke particle will also move down with the air particle. If I place a smoke particle at position B, because the air particles are moving up, so smoke particle will move upward from position B. Is it clear now? So same thing happened here that we have the air particles, we supply energy. So these molecules move away from each other. So volume increases, the density decrease. So group of particle will rise. As they rise, if we have a smoke particle here, smoke particle will also rise with the particle. But at this position, what happened? Because a group of particles are closer to each other. So their volume is less, so their density is more. So group of particle will move down. So they will take the smoke together with them downward. So if we place a smoke particle at position A, it will move down. But if we place at position B, it will rise. Then sea breeze and land breeze, or you can also say day breeze or night breeze. What happened? Look. Sun is providing heat energy to both land and this is a sun. The sun is providing heat energy to both land and sea. But what happened? The relation between specific heat capacity and temperature change are inversely proportional. If the object is having a smaller specific heat capacity, then it will show a greater change in temperature. So when we compare the specific heat capacity of the land and specific heat capacity of the sea, which is water here. So specific heat capacity of the sea is higher and specific heat capacity of the land is smaller, which will show greater change in temperature, land or sea. If same amount of heat is supplied to both land and sea, 
the specific heat capacity of the land is smaller and specific heat capacity of the sea is greater so which one show a greater change in temperature so land will show a greater change in temperature because specific heat and temperature change are inversely proportional so for the same amount of energy supplied if specific heat is less so temperature change for a land is greater specific heat of sea is more so its temperature change will be smaller so as the temperature change for the land is more so land will become hot so as the land will become hot there are air particles above the land and there are air particles above the sea so the air particles which are above the land so they will become hot as well because the land is hot so as the air particle above the land will become hot these air particle move away from each other so as the air particle move away from each other the volume will increase as the volume of the air increase what happen to density of the, of the air above the land as the volume increase for a group of particles above the land so the density decreases so as the density decreases so group of particles or air particles will move or rise and as a group of particles or air particles which are above the land these particle rise so there is a vacuum created there is a space created because you will have more particles here above the sea and most of the air particles above the land rises up so what happen the particles move from higher concentration to lower concentration and this movement of the particle from one region to another what we will observe will observe moving air or wind or we also say a sea breeze is it clear how a sea breeze is produced that's why if you standing at a sea shore or a coastal area you will find that the continuous the air is blowing what is the reason why there is a continuous movement of the air because the land the air above the land is hot so and that air is continuously rising so which create an empty space for the air particles to move so the air particles move from sea to land and we call that as sea breeze and this is a repetition process because what happen these air particles which are there are air particles above the land and there are air particles above the sea sun is providing heat energy yes at night what happen at night opposite will happen i will explain how what is happen at night as well so there is a wind or a moving air at night but the direction changes what is the reason for that i will explain that as well now what happen at day time sun is providing heat energy to both land and sea as we know the specific heat capacity of the land is small so it will show a greater change in temperature so as the land will show a greater change in temperature the land will be hot as the land is hot the air above the land is also hot and what happen to the hot air the hot air will rise so air particle move up above the land so as these particle move up so they create a space for other particles to move so the particle above the sea will move towards the land and take the position and this process continue that's why during a day time we have a sea breeze or you can also say day breeze is it clear but at night what happen at night we don't have any heat source but because throughout the day as you can see at night opposite will happen why opposite will happen at night you don't have a heat source 
and the energy heat energy which absorbed by the water throughout the day so water at night is hot as compared to land which is cold what is the reason why the water is hot and the land is cold because as you can see when we say the object is having a smaller specific heat capacity so it will show a greater change in temperature greater change in temperature means is it can become hot quickly as well as it can become cold or lose heat energy to surrounding so during a day time example during a day time a sun provide 100 joules to the land and 100 joules to the sea this is just an example so what happen out of this 100 joules which is on the land the land transfer this 100 joules to the air molecules and these air molecule absorb energy and they will rise up so what will happen to the energy of the land the energy or the temperature of the land will so energy of the land will decrease like example it will become 80 joules what happen this is a continuous process so air molecules above the land they rises up so as they rise they cool down and the air molecules which are at the sea they are moving towards the land so this is a continuous process like a cycle when the air molecules which move from sea to land become hot they will also rise up then other molecule will take the position and when the molecule rise up once they lose their energy they will return back as they cool down they are more denser so they will return back and this process will continue that's why you have a continuous moving air when you are standing at a sea shore but at night opposite will happen at night opposite will happen when we compare the sea temperature because sea throughout the day absorb too much energy and 70% is sea so it absorb a lot of energy as compared to land so at night the sea which is warm it start to release the energy when it start to release the energy so air particles which are above the sea or the water surface these air particle absorb energy and they will rise up so as these particle rise up the molecules of air which are above the land will move towards the sea and at night what we have we have a land breeze or also known as a night breeze so if you are living at a coastal area or a sea shore you can observe this direction change in direction of the air during a day time you will observe that the movement of air is from sea to land but at night the direction is completely opposite it is from land to sea and that's because of convection day time the land is high temperature so air above the land rises up so air move from sea to land the air particle move from sea to land but at night the air above the water or the sea is warm that air rises up so air move air particle move from land to the sea and we observe a night breeze or you can also say land breeze is it clear the difference between the sea breeze and the land breeze how it occur any doubt in this part feel free to ask your doubts if you want me to revise repeat any topic any part just mention that how the air above the land is heated air because the land absorb energy so it is hot air molecules are continuously colliding so as these air molecules are colliding they absorb energy from the land and rise up when the energy transfer between the two state that's called conduction like air is a gas 
and land is a solid so the, how the energy transfer between solid and gas that is conduction same way the hot water system or refrigerator compartments they all use the same concept like how this refrigerator compartment is working you can set up the freezer compartment you will find the freezer compartment is always placed at the top why it's not placed at the bottom so what is the reason actually a refrigerator in refrigerator is cooling down the things so it is removing the heat energy instead of supplying the heat energy how it works it also use the same concept of convection look in the beginning there are air particles inside the refrigerator say you did not switch on the refrigerator it's off initially so if refrigerator is initially is off it means uniform distribution of the air particles or air particles are distributed evenly what happened this refrigerator freezer compartment remove the energy when you switch on this refrigerator it remove the energy so when it remove the energy what will happen to the particles they will come closer to each other or move away from each other like example if i take this group of particle as a freezer compartment remove the energy it's not supplying energy it is taking the energy from them so as it remove the energy the particles will come closer to each other so as the particles will come closer the volume will decrease so the density will increase as the density increases so the group of particles here they come closer to each other density increase so what happen this is a cold air so they will sink they will move down and in comparison when we compare any other part of the liquid other part of the refrigerator or a fridge the air particles are close not closer to each other so they have greater volume as they have greater volume the density is less so that hot air will rise up so freezer compartment why it is always placed at the top so it can remove the energy from the particles and when they it remove the energy from the particle the particles which i have low energy they will move down so hot air will rise up and it will continuously set up a convection current but if i place other way around like example if the freezer compartment was placed at the bottom means here the freezer compartment is placed at the bottom this refrigerator will work efficiently yes or no if i place a freezer compartment at the bottom so it will not work efficiently what is the reason why it will not work efficiently because the purpose of the freezer compartment is to remove the heat energy from the particles so they can come closer to each other and sink so when the freezer compartment is placed at the bottom if it is placed at the bottom the particles the particles what happen the particle will come closer to each other so volume decreases as the volume decrease the density increase so this particle cannot further sink so they will remain here and the other particles which are hot they remain at the top and this will not like this refrigerator will have different temperatures at the top side it will be hot and at the bottom it will be cold but this is not effective to keep the things cold that's why whenever there is a freezer compartment in a refrigerator it is always placed at the top is it clear
so the always you will find a freezer compartment for a refrigerator is always at the top same way how the air conditioners are working or ac is working and why air conditioner or ac is always placed near the ceiling why not at the bottom that's the same reason to set up a convection current like example say so this is the room is having an air condition or ac and there are air particles in the room so when you are using an ac or air condition what is the purpose of this ac it remove the energy from the air particle or supply the energy it remove heat energy to the air particle or supply the heat energy to air particles so it is removing the heat energy so when it is removing the heat energy from the particles because the ac is removing the heat energy so as it remove the heat energy the particles will come closer to each other as the particle come closer to each other so density volume will decrease volume decrease density increase as the density increases the group of the particle will sink or move down and the other group of particle which are closer to which are away from each other or having a low density they will rise up so that's how ac air condition is working efficiently if you place air ac near the ceiling the cold air will move down and the hot air will rise up yes uh, what's the question yes conduction happen in solid if you are holding a rod uh, heat transfer from hot iron to a person holding it so that's by conduction it's not by convection and uh, why it is uh, do not cool hot air by no actually it is not doing like this how the ac is working A air condition ac is taking the air mo molecules and removing the heat energy and supply push the air molecules back into the room so there is a outer unit for air condition or split ac it is uh, taking the air removing the energy and supplying back to the room so when it supply back into the room the cold molecules which have low density which have high density or closer to each other will sink so the hot molecules will rise up and it will set up a convection current but for example if a technician place the ac at the bottom will it work efficiently like if we place the air condition or ac near the ground will it work efficiently so why it will not work efficiently because the purpose of this ac or air condition is to remove the energy so all the cold air will be at the bottom and all the hot air will be at the top so air condition must be placed near the ceiling or at the top for efficient working the same way like if you are using your air condition the split acs can be used as a heater as well but if you are using it as a heater it will not be efficient of warming the room if you are using a room heater how a room heater is working a same principle
So air molecules which are nearby the heater absorb energy, move away from each other, rise up, and the cold molecule will move, and this will set up a convection current. But if I place a heater at the top, like I switch the position of the heater. i place the heater here is it efficient will it work efficiently if i place the heater at the top at position a the air at the bottom won't be warmed by because the hot air always rise up so this is not the efficient the correct position for a heat source no the heater is not removing the cold air the heater is supplying the energy the heater is supplying the energy to the particles which are present in the room so these are the air particles heater supply energy so these air particle move away from each other and hot rises up cold will move towards so it is supplying the heat energy to the air particles Yes, Mohsen. Sir, um, you mentioned earlier that the transfer between the land and the air is by conduction, the heat energy. So how yeah, does the, that work? The this part, the transfer of energy between the land and the air, that is by conduction. How it happened actually, because when the land, which is a solid, the particles are vibrating. so they are colliding with each other okay and these particle air molecules are moving randomly so air molecules also collide with the land particle and absorb energy and they rise up so between land and air is a conduction but within the air is this convection yeah okay got it okay so the last method of energy transfer or heat energy transfer is known as radiation so when the energy transfer in the form of ray or a wave we call that as radiation and this can pass this process do not require any medium like example sun is far away from us but even though and there is a vacuum between the sun and earth but still you can feel the heat which is coming from the sun so what is the reason why you are able to feel the heat or how the heat energy is transfer from sun to the earth is by radiation or wave and radiation of wave it can travel through vacuum means without a medium if energy transfer that's by radiation radiation can pass through air as well it does not mean like only in vacuum it happen radiation can pass through air as well but as well as vacuum without any medium without any material between the two surface the energy if we are able to receive we call that as radiation so if you are you light up a candle and you are at position b and you can feel the heat from the candle so how you are able to feel the heat from the candle because energy transfer from the candle to you by form of wave or radiation which are also known as infrared radiation heat radiation or infrared radiations if i have two position like example position 1 and position 2 you place your hand at position 2 and you place your hand at position 1 which position you will feel warmer position 1 or position 2 which position you will feel warmer so when you place your hand that's right one at position 1 you will feel warmer but what is the reason why at position 1 you will feel warmer as compared to position 2 because position 1 there are two ways by which energy transfer to you 
when i place my hand above the candle flame the energy is transferred by radiation as well as the air molecules which absorb the energy they rise up so it is by radiation and convection so two methods are responsible for heat energy transfer that is why at position 1 i will feel warmer but when i place my hand at position 2 the only way the energy is transferred to me is by radiation and how we can detect this radiation we can use a thermometer to detect these radiations is it clear why the position 1 is warmer than position 2 because position 1 you the there are two ways energy transfer to you con radiation and convection but position 2 only radiation was there that's why you don't feel that warmer that's why like in winter if you want to keep your hands warmer for longer period of a time or want to receive more energy so you should always place your hand above the heat source not sideways because when you place your hand above the heat source two ways energy transfer to you so you receive greater amount of energy and absorbers and emitters why we feel warmer when the heat is coming to us basically our body consists of water molecules so in our body when heat energy is absorbed our water molecules in our body start to vibrate and when these water molecules start to vibrate the temperature of that part of the body increases that's why we will feel warmer emitter and absorber what is the meaning of emitter the substance which give out energy is called emitter and the substance which absorb or take in energy is called absorber and always the good emitter is always a good absorber example say three radiations are entering or strike for both objects three radiations incident and this is releasing only one out of this and this is releasing two which one is a good absorber or you can understand from reflection so this only allow one radiation to bounce back and this bounce back all the three radiation from the surface which one is a good absorber the first one a or b which one is a good absorber which take greater amount of energy three radiation strike all three bounce back of the surface i am saying all three bounce back of the surface for b and only one of the radiation bounce back from the surface and remaining two absorbed so which is a good absorber so a is a good absorber and b is a good it's a poor absorber but good reflector so it absorb greater amount of energy and it for a absorb greater amount of energy for b it reflect greater amount of energy so it's a poor absorber but when we compare the emitter so which one is good emitter the good absorber is always a good emitter because it absorb two energy radiation after some time it will release that but for b it does not absorb any energy so it will not release any energy so always a good absorber is a good emitter 
and poor absorber is also a poor emitter but good reflector is it clear <laughs> 